Welcome to Geology Concepts. In this video, we will be dealing with tuning. So let's get started. If you go into the definition of tuning, it is basically when two or more minerals sometimes interlow in such a way that individual parts are in reverse position to each other. But basically sometimes during the crystal growth, the crystal is subjected to stress or temperature or pressure conditions different from those under which it was formed. So in such cases, two or more intergrown crystals are formed in a symmetrical fashion. So these symmetrical intergrowth of crystal are called twin crystals and this process is called twinning. Okay. Then there are some basic characteristics of a twinning that it, it has sometimes has a twin plane. Now this is an imaginary plane which divides the twin crystals into two halves such that one half is the reflection of the other. Then there can be twin x if there is not a good plane of intergrowth, there is an axis. Now again an imaginary axis about which the rotation is necessary to bring the twin to its untwinned state. Then there is twin center or twinning center. When twinning is defined by respect to the symmetry about a point, this is called twin center. And there is this composition plane, the plane by which the component crystals of a twin are joined is called a composition plane. There is something which is more fundamental to twinning is the twin laws. The twin laws are expressed as either form symbols to define the twin plane or it is or as a zone symbols in the square bracket or the Miller indices to define the directions of the twin axis. So the surface along which the lattice points are shared in twin crystals are called composition surface. Okay. Plane by which the component crystals of a twin are joined or shared is called the composition surface. Then if the twin law can be defined by simple planar compositions, then it is then this twin plane is always parallel to the face of the crystal face and never parallel to the existing symmetry of the crystal. Therefore, it can be said that twinning always adds to the symmetry it, and therefore it is always parallel to some of the crystal faces and if the twin law is a rotation axis the composition surface will be irregular that means you cannot define a plane there then you have to define define an axis or a twin axis the twin axis with them, therefore will be perpendicular to the lattice plane and will never be an even pole rotation axis it will always be an odd rotation axis. Next is the types of twins. So there can be a contact twin. What is contact twin? It consists of two halves united by composition plane such that one part is the mirror image of the other. Then there are penetration twin. Now here the twin appears as if the individuals were crossing each other. As you can see in this figure, they seem to have crossing each other or penetrating to each other. So storolite and uh, pyrite show this type of twinning. Now in, the, in case of pyrite we call it iron cross twinning. Then there are repeated twins. Now if this contact twin or contact twin is repeated over you know twin planes are parallel to each other and there are many twin planes such type of twinning is called polysynthetic or lamellar twinning and if they are not parallel then they are cyclic or symmetrical which is called cyclic twins in case of retired it is called geniculate twinning and in case of gypsum gypsum is called butterfly twinning so these are the basic types of twin now we'll go into the origin of twinning how does it twinning takes place the first is the growth twin now in growth twin what happens when we go into growth twin where accidents occur. Now, when we say accidents, we mean the change in the stress conditions. So, when the accidents occur during crystal growth, a new crystal is added to the face of a crystal, already existing crystal, as you can see in this figure. Tuning can occur if the new crystal shares lattice point on the face of existing crystal, but has an orientation different from the original crystal. Okay, such growth twins can be contact twins. Okay. Contact twins is an example of growth twins. 
Next is the transformation to insulin. Now this is due to the change in pressure and temperature conditions. Now in quartz, the diodophene and Brazil tuning are the example of transformation to insulin. We'll see how they are going in the further, further, further in the video. Third is the deformation trends in which the atoms pushed out of place, as you can see in this figure here. So what happens during deformation? Atoms can be pushed out of the place. If this happens to produce a symmetrical arrangement, it produces deformation trends. Now the mineral calcite can easily be twinned in this way, producing a polysynthetic twin. We go into common twin laws. Now, what is twin law that possesses or uh, shows a specific kind of twinning? Now, that twinning, when represented by Miller indices, is called twin laws. So, first in the triclinic system, we have albite law. Now, albite law, plagioclase shows albite law, which is 0, 1, 0. As you can see in this figure, it is perpendicular to the B axis, the plane is 0, 1, 0 which is very common in plagioclases. Next is the periclean law. Now this is 0, 1, 0 in the square bracket. That means parallel to the B axis. And it is also again present in the microclane or when monocline orthoclase or cyanidine transforming to microclane. So again in the feldspar. So when these two periclean albite, albite tuning produces uh, together, then they produce a cross hat pattern called tatan tuning. Then, in the monoclinic system, we have Manbach law again 0, 0, 001 common to mineral orthoclase. Then, there is Carlsbad law, which is 0, 0, 001 in the zonal plane, it means in the zone or it's, it's a direction, it's an axis. So, it is again common in orthoclase. Then, there is Bravino law or 0, 021, which is common in orthoclase again. And swallow tail twins 100. It's a plane observed in mineral gypsum. The corresponding figures you can see. So, in case of Carlsbad law, it's a twin axis, otherwise, in monoclinic system, all other three Manbag, Bravino, and swallow tail are the composition planes. Then we have hexagonal system or orthorhombic system. Now in orthorhombic system, the cyclic twins 110 plane precisely shown by aragonite and chrysoberyl and cetusite. Then there is torolite 031 shows 220 and 231. Now this is very common in minerals torolite. Then in tetragonal system, there is only one tuning called cyclic contact tuning which is owned by retile and cassiterite. Then the hexagonal system. In this system, calcite law. Hexagonal system, as you remember, has four mirror indices, HKL0, HKLO. So calcite shows 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 1 bar and 2, and corresponding figure. Then there's quartz. Quartz show three types of twinning. One is Brazil law, which is 1, 1, 2 bar 0. It is a penetration twin. Then there is Dauphine law. Now these two, as we already discussed, are transformation twins, which are which occur due to change in the pressure and temperature conditions. Now Dauphine law is a penetration twin. Again, now this here is not a twin plane, it's a twin axis, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is actually parallel to the growth axis. Next is the Japanese law. It's called 1, 1, 2 bar 2, which means it's a plane, it's a composition plane, and uh, it's a contact twin. Okay, and contact twin, which means that it consists of two halves united by a composition plane, so that one part is the mirror image of the other, as you can see in the figure also, Japanese twin. Finally, we have isometric system. In this, we have a spinel law, which is 1, 1 bar 1, commonly seen in mineral spinel. Then there is 1, 1, 1, which is a twin axis perpendicular to an octahedral face, threefold rotational symmetry. Then there is iron cross twinning, which is again a twin axis, 0, 0, 1. The mineral pyrite appears to 
often shows the iron cross tuning interpretation of two pyrotohedrons inside each other you can see this figure here okay so these are the basic training examples and uh, so this is for this video do mention in comments how you are liking the series and uh, thank you very much